Well, good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Tuesday, March 30th, uh, Holy Tuesday of Holy Week, and uh, that is when Jesus is in the temple area, uh, and he's assuring people of his teaching and his spiritual authority, and um, based upon what is going to take place, we can sense that the tension keeps rising and rising and rising, of which... Jesus keeps claiming how he is the the Son of God, and people don't want any of don't want any of that. That's blasphemous. So um, the tension keeps building as we get closer and closer to uh, Thursday, the, the night of Jesus' arrest in agony in the garden. But we'll get there eventually. Um, anyway, today's gospel is from John, chapter thirteen. Uh, verses 21 through 33, and then verses 36 through 38. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. When he had said this, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified, Amen, amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I, have, after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After he took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, What are you going to do? What you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas, since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus, Jesus had told him, buy what we need for the feast, or to give something to the poor. So he took the morsel and left it once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, as I, and as I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow me later. Peter said to him, Master, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen, I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. <clears throat> okay, so this is, um, you know, John's gospel. This actually takes place on uh, Thursday night um, in between the washing of the feet and before the Last Supper as they celebrate Passover. Um, so this is that dialogue that takes place. And we can, you know, so Jesus is having this conversation with his disciples of which he's talking and telling them that one of them is going to betray him. And the disciples don't know that it's going to be Judas, even though Judas leaves, um, as it explains here in the gospel. And, uh, it says one of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. That is John, the apostle, the one who stands by Jesus at the foot of the cross with Mary uh, while he's suffering. Uh, so G John is the one disciple, as we learn throughout the, the Passion Dialogue and throughout the, the resurrection, that John is the one who is who Jesus keeps on earth who dies a natural death who's the only apostle apostle that is not martyred because john needs to protect mary the mother of the mother of god um so what's taking place here you know we all know judas and what took place with him and what he did um, but then i think what we're what we're going to get from from peter and what i think we can relate to is is peter's response to the spiritual highs and the spiritual lows, which is something that we all go through. Um, 
I'm sure at some point in our lives we've we've had a, a spiritual high where we've had a really good holy hour, uh, or we've had a, a phenomenal mass, or we went to maybe a a retreat, or we went to a a conference, or we went to uh, something something where we felt like our faith was just alive, and uh, that's what's taking place with Peter here, you know, because Peter, you know, Peter is talking about how he, you know, he'll give his life for him, you know, he's at the spiritual high, you know, Jesus, you know, already said that he's going to give Peter the keys of the kingdom, or he's going to, and then, um, so, so Peter is like, you know, I'm all in, I'm all in, I'll do whatever you want me to do, Lord, but then just imagine, you know, as he goes through, and Jesus tells Peter that, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And how much of a, a spiritual low that must have been for Peter. If you've seen the passion of the Christ, you see the, the inner turmoil that is externalized uh, through Peter whenever he's just wailing and bawling and remembering. And he's, it's re revealed to him that he just denied Jesus, his master, three times after saying he'd stick by his side no matter what. Um, but we'll see, <clears throat> you see all these different, you know, this roller coaster ride of the spiritual life. Because clearly, you know, Peter was at this low point. But then he clearly had a high point because that is the, that is why the, the Bishop of Rome is in Rome. Because Peter went to Rome after, after Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross and all the disciples dispersed. Uh, which is also part of the reason, historically, of why there's different rites of the Catholic Church. But the head is Peter in Rome, um, which again, faith and logic make sense again. Um, so anyway, with with you know with Peter's roller coaster ride, we too, in our humanity, we have roller coaster rides of our faith life. I'm sure uh, moments where we feel really, really good, and we feel like we're doing God's will, and we're you know we're like we'll do anything for you, Lord. And we're, we're almost to the point of tears of just how much God loves us. But then we have these low points of which we feel like we're not worthy. Um, and we fall into sin. Um, and we feel like we can't do anything good. And we fall into this spiritual pit of despair where we feel like our sins, even though we're the only ones that know them, and God um, in most cases, um, but we feel like everybody else around us knows what our sins are, and we get in this, this 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 pit that we need help getting out of, which is why we have the sacraments of confession and stuff like that. Um, and we fall into this thing called scrupulosity, where we think that we're we're never good enough, which is totally not what Jesus preached. You know, He is a, a God of mercy and forgiveness, and He is always wanting us to return to Him. So. You know, we have moments where we feel like we're bold and courageous, and we have other times where we're weak and cowardly. And uh, this is just very normal. This is uh, this is typical uh, for the interior life. Um, so the question is, you know, throughout this Holy Week and every, and, you know, throughout our lives, is how do we manage that? You know, whenever I was in sales for a little bit, you know, how do you, you know, you have your highs and your lows, and you know, do we allow our spiritual highs to keep us going? And to motivate us um, to perceive or to 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 go after that higher truth and to keep going after those highs while we're in a low point, because um, that's going to happen. So, um, do we allow those low points to to overpower us, or do we keep those spiritual highs at the forefront of our mind uh, to motivate us uh, to help us continue growing in our relationship with Christ and uh, in our understanding of the faith? Because if it's so easy to help to make our low points, to, to keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper into those pits of despair, which is not what our, our Christ died on the cross for. He doesn't want us to get into those pits of despair. So how do you manage that? Um, kind of reflect upon that and, and try to you know, go through those ebbs and flows of the spiritual life in a manner that can only be um, at a nice level um, if we keep our relationship with the Lord in prayer um, a constant. So in a very simple way, I guess, we need to make sure we pray all the time through our highs and our lows and don't, and don't allow ourselves to get comfortable because com being comfortable, especially in our prayer life, will eventually seem to um, 
will eventually go away from that, which is not good. So otherwise, get something from that. I talk too long once again, but it's Holy Week. God bless. Keep it real. Amen. In the Father, Son, and Spirit.